Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching these. It really means a lot. Um, today we're going to look at how to create your own drum sample from scratch with found objects around your house using Soundtrap. Now this may seem like a very weird out there kind of thing, but here we go. You may uh, want to do this, you might not want to do this. Some people enjoy making their own drum sounds, and this is just how I would go about doing it using Soundtrap. So the first thing that you need to do is get your microphone set up correctly. So I'm going to add um, an audio track, and I'm going to make it a voice and a microphone. And the first thing I'm going to do is go in and set this back to clean, because I don't want the processed audio um, to be there, because it adds... A lot of weird reverb and stuff and just it's too much for me the second thing is to make sure that you've selected the right microphone so i'm using my studio 1824 by presonus so i'm going to select that and i can tell that it's the right microphone because right now as i'm talking this little purple bar is jumping up and down which helps me know now if you're using your built-in computer microphone or a USB microphone, there is a step that you need to make sure you do. And that step is to click on this little logo right here and follow the mic check. Now, the sample that I'm going to make today is using this here plastic laundry basket and a bass drum mallet. I just so happen to have these things laying around my classroom. So. That is the sound that we are going to record, and I'm going to attempt to make kind of a kick drum sound um, out of it. So I'm holding the handle so I don't get any extra rattle out of it, and I'm just giving it a nice thwop on the bottom um, to get that sound. Now, I'm going to do the microphone test. Now, while you do the mic test, you just need to hit it as many times as you can in a row. So there it says it has now found the proper volume or gain for my microphone to be. So I'm going to say done. If you're using an audio interface, you're going to have to set this gain on your own. So you'll actually have to uh, manipulate the gain using the audio meters on your uh, audio interface. But for this purposes, we are now set. I'm going to hit the record button. And I don't want to monitor this, especially with what all is happening right here. So I'm going to say that I'm not using uh, headphones. So it switches the monitoring off. Um, so I've got the record button enabled. I'm set to go um, to record my samples. Now, to record the samples, I'm just going to hit it once. Let the sound die away. Wait. Hit it again. Let the sound all die away so that I have five or six clean hits on this uh, device bucket here. So here we go. Ready and record. So there we go. We've got several different uh, hits there. Put my bucket away. Um, I accidentally hit the microphone on this one, so I doubt it's going to be good. So we're just going to go back and listen and see which one we like the best. So let's see. Ooh, I think that's my favorite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to split this region before and after, a good bit after that, and just hit delete and delete. So I right-clicked and I chose split region, and now I have a nice tight one hit sound so my next step 
is I'm going to zoom in and trim that even closer. So as I can now begin to see the actual audio wave, I'm going to undo my snap to grid so that I can set my playhead wherever I want it. I'm going to set it right to the beginning of that sound. Again, I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit split the region and delete the part I don't want. So I have the drum hit set as close to the beginning as I can really get it. And then I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit and I'm going to shorten this so it only lasts about one beat worth of sound, which should cover us for any layover. Now, you can hear that there's that little bit of background noise in this recording currently. Um, in order to make sure that that doesn't interfere with anything um, in the sample, I'm actually going to take the fade out right here and apply it to the end of this sample and adjust it so that it doesn't have as sharp of a at the end of it. So there we don't notice that happening at the end because we added the fade out. So there we've taken our sample and we've turned it into something uh, that's just a one hit that kind of sounds a little bit kick drumish. But the last thing I'm going to do to really solidify this is I'm going to go in and add some effects. So I'm going to click on the little microphone. I'm going to go in. There's two things I'm going to add, an equalizer and a compressor. So um, to make it a kick, probably don't want very much high end into this sound. So let's try something like this. Now we'll work on the punch level. So there we have a pretty well-rounded uh, drum sample for the most part. Now. To export this to be able to use it somewhere else, I'm going to turn it into its own individual file. If you've done a lot of these together, that's totally okay to do a bunch at one time. Uh, instead of going up here to export an entire project to an MP3 or Wave, I'm actually going to go to the single track, click on the three dots, and export this track. Now you'll notice instantly it exported that one track down into the bottom corner of Google here. It went to your download folder if you're on a Mac or PC. And so you actually have that one hit and all that one hit is is ooh, from the basket. So uh, you can go in and begin to line those up and maybe make your own drum loop out of the samples you made. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, Hit the thumbs up button below and feel free to subscribe for more of what's happening at Roaring Records.